Hey, it's Meredith again from vidpromom.com and this is my final video in my series on how to get started using VSDC for your video editing. I actually partnered with VSDC to help get you up to speed on this free platform for editing your GoPro videos, your family movies, your hobby movies, your YouTube videos, whatever you have going on. In the previous two videos in this series, I went over how to get started with VSTC, how to open up a new project, how to import your footage, and then we went over how to perform some of the basic video editing functions and some of the more advanced and fancy video editing functions. Today, we're gonna talk about adding music to your video, we're gonna talk about adding a title screen to your video, and probably the most important part, we're gonna talk about exporting your video so that you can upload it to YouTube or Facebook and all your friends and family will be so impressed and possibly a little bit jealous of your video editing skills. So I'm gonna hop onto the PC here and see where we left off. So we're gonna dive into this third installment in my VSDC series. But first I do wanna remind you, if you haven't already, I want you to pick up my uh, VSDC cheat sheet. It's for total beginners. It helps you kind of jump in and get started creating a video project within VSDC. And you can grab that through the link uh, that I'll put below this video, or you can just head over to vidpromom.com slash VSDC cheat sheet. So let's pick up where we left off in the very last video. Um, I showed you how to start a project, import your clips, how to trim your clips, how to split your clips, how to maybe add some slow motion or fast forwarding. And today we're going to talk about kind of wrapping up your project and adding just a couple of little bells and whistles that might uh, kind of make your video a little more fun to watch, a little more cohesive. So first things first, everyone always wants to know about background music. And I actually, I have a whole video on where to find background music that you can use for free and without getting into trouble legally. So I'm, I'll link that below uh, as well if you're wondering where to find your background music. I already have some in my Dropbox, so I'm gonna show you how to actually add that background music to your uh, project here within VSTC. So up here under editor, I had shown you how to add an object to your uh, project here, and I showed you how to add your video clips. Well, this time we're gonna add audio, but I also wanna let you know that you have the same exact options over here, kind of pinned to the left-hand side. So if I just hit this little, uh, music note, it's going to open up um, a folder where I can try to locate some background music. So I have this one here called Love Will Set Us Free. I downloaded this from my Epidemic Sound account because I use Epidemic Sound um, for the background music for my YouTube videos. And it asks me, where do I want to, uh, where do I want this music to start, right? So um, I actually want this to start from the beginning of the scene. So I'm going to say from scene begin and then I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see it starts from the beginning here. So you can see I have these three track, four tracks, excuse me, and it's gonna start here at the beginning. And if I hit preview, let's see what happens. So there we have background music in our video. Now, one of my favorite, favorite tips for editing videos, especially GoPro videos, is to choose your background music first because it will really help in your editing to kind of know where to make the jump cuts to make the video kind of flow uh, visually. So I'm, I'm kind of working backwards here, but uh, that's how you add your background music. Um, to your video. So next let's talk about adding a title. So at the very beginning of your video, you might wanna add a title. So if you just come over here on the left, you'll see the T for text. If you just hit text, um, it's gonna insert some text for us. And again, it asks us where do we want it to go? I'm gonna say from the cursor position because the cursor, my cursor happens to be right at the beginning here, but you could also say uh, from the scene beginning 
Um, so I'm just gonna hit okay. And now we have like a little crosshairs thing. Uh, so we're gonna actually create a text box. I'm just clicking and dragging. And when I let go, I have a cursor and I can just start typing. So if I say Adirondack Mountains, August, oops, let's spell things right, 2017. So that's the default text options here. I'm going to select all of this. And then we have all of the sort of same um, text editing functions that you would expect from pretty much anything here, right? So I can change the font. Um, let's use something like this. And then I can change the size. I can make it bigger. I can make, you know, maybe I can make this one a little bit smaller. Let's see like that. Um, I can change uh, if I want it to be centered inside of the text box or maybe I want it to be right justified. We'll just go with left over here. Um, and there you go. You can change your um, your letting. <laughs> you can change um, all these kinds of different things. Um, you can make it in the middle of your text box here. Um, or you can make it down there at the bottom, which that's fine. That looks good. It's nice and simple. Not too bad, right? And you can see down here that we have a new layer for our text. And then this is kind of where we would control how long it was going to last on our screen. Now, one of the things I want to do is actually turn down the music on my background music. So I have that uh, selected. I'm going to come down here to audio volume and I'm going to bring it down. I don't know. We'll say like negative 20 or so. I still want to be able to hear it. Just don't want it to be so loud. So I'm going to hit preview. So you can adjust this if you want it. That seemed kind of long. So if I make it nice and short, let's try that. See how long it lasts. So it disappears for us automatically. So that's how you can um, add a title. You can put titles anywhere in your video. I usually like to put something at the beginning that shows where we are and when we went there um, just for you know my own future <laughs> reference so you could put something at the end if you wanted to also so I just usually stick to something at the beginning now I want to talk a little bit about transitions because uh, sometimes I forget about transitions because personally I like simple transitions like in the form of a jump cut meaning pretty much no transition at all. Like I like to go from one scene to another. So I want to split my clip here um, into two sections. I'm just going to hit that um, scissor tool there. So I want to cut this. I'm just going to rearrange these so I can show you. So this is what it would look like as a jump cut. So it went from one scene, basically like one angle to a completely different angle, right? No transition at all whatsoever. I like jump cuts like that. But if you wanted to get a little more fancy, you might want to do a little fade between the two scenes or the two clips um, or, you know, something like that. So I have this one here um, selected. So I'm going to right click, come up. Um, come up under uh, video effects and come down to transitions. And um, personally, I think a fade is is pretty good. But if you wanted to get uh, a little more fancy, you could do a page turn. And what this is asking you is, do you want to add this page turn transition to the clip that you have selected? Or do you want it to be applied to the entire sprite, which is basically our entire um, project that we're working on here? I'm just going to say, uh, yes, I want to apply it to the selected object. And now it wants to know where to insert this transition. It automatically has it selected to go to scene end, which means that 
um, you know, if the transition lasts for three seconds, then, or, you know, it has one second on here, then it's going to be the very last one second of that clip. If I wanted to bump this up so that the transition was a little bit slower, um, I'll make it two seconds. We're going to hit OK. If I hit preview, now we have a two second page turn transition. So that's what's that's what a transition is. That's what's going on um, in between two of your clips, right? So you can add transitions if you want to. I personally like to stick to the jump cuts. So assuming that I have edited my project and I love it and it's great, I have titles, transitions, I have background music, everything is edited and it's perfect. And I wanna share it with my friends and family on Facebook or YouTube. What we're gonna have to do is actually export our project. And VSDC gives us a lot of different options. In fact, uh, pretty much any video editor that you open up and then go to export, there's so many different options and it gets really overwhelming really quickly. But how you export has a pretty big effect on the actual final video that you're gonna end up uploading. So we're up here under this uh, export project menu here. Uh, first thing you wanna do is select over here what you're planning to do with this video. Uh, if you wanna just save it to your PC, um, that's fine. If you wanna put it on a DVD, that's fine. That's beyond the scope of this video, but you do have that available. What we wanna select though is web. So I know I'm gonna put, put this on uh, Facebook or YouTube, so I'm gonna select web. Now, um, we have a lot of info <laughs> sort of happening here. Now, usually I would just select this MP4 and export it and uh, change any of my settings that I want to, but uh, VSDC gives you these options for YouTube, for Instagram, for Facebook. And what it's going to do is actually export your video at the recommended settings for those platforms. Uh, so for example, um, it changes some of these settings down here under this uh, profile. So uh, if you look under here, you can actually um, change the size of the resolution of your video. So Mine is 1080, that's HD, and I'm just gonna leave it there. But if you had 4K, or if you wanted to export it even smaller at 720, then you could so you could select that there if you wanted to. If I hit for Instagram, it's gonna change things a little bit more. It's gonna actually make it square. So you can sort of see the preview over here. It took my, my regular video here and made it square. So um, that's what it would look like if I wanted to upload that to uh, the regular Instagram feed. If I go to Facebook, it's going to change things a little bit more. It's going to give us a 720 uh, by default. So you can kind of go through here and select what you're trying to do. But a lot of times I just stick to the regular MP4 um, and and you can even select your different quality settings there. But I think for right now, I think I'm just gonna hit for YouTube and then I'm just gonna do export project. So what VSDC is doing now is kind of crunching through that video and turning it into an actual file that I can upload to, uh, to Facebook or YouTube or do whatever I want with it. Now, because I have the pro version of VSDC activated, um, I think it gives me a little bit faster uh, uh, exporting. So you may get a little pop up that, you know, telling you that you may want to upgrade to the pro version. You don't have to do that. You can still export your video just fine without it. And depending on your actual computer, it may take a long time to do this process. It may not. It depends on your computer. It depends on your video files. It depends on your export settings. It depends on how long the video is. It depends on a lot of different things. But usually it does take a little bit to export a video. Now that the export process is complete, it asks me if I want to upload directly to YouTube. I'm actually gonna hit no on this. So down here, this tells me where I uh, save that file to. You can actually change that before you export and uh, I didn't. So I can open up this folder and I have my video file right here. If I double click, I can hit play and then we can see it from beginning to end as an actual video file uh, once it gets loaded here. 
So there it is. If I wanted to upload this to Facebook now, I can uh, literally just drop this into Facebook or YouTube or do whatever I want with it. Um, I can move it into a Dropbox um, if I wanted to maybe sync it to my iPhone so that I could see it there, upload it to social media from there. So that's how we export our videos in VSDC once we're done editing them. And I think it's really important just to note, don't forget that you're editing a video and just leave it on your hard drive because nobody is going to ever be able to watch it on your hard drive. Get it edited, get it out there, share it with friends and family. Or just put it, you know, in a folder on your hard drive somewhere where it's actually viewable as a video file and not just stuck inside of a video editing project. So as you can see, VSDC is a great video editing platform for beginners or really anybody that's looking for a full featured video editor without a full featured price tag. The free version is great as is, and the pro version has a few extra little goodies that I like, like the visual waveforms, uh, and it's only 20 bucks to upgrade, so I think it's totally worth it. If you enjoyed this series and this video, please give this a big thumbs up, just hit that like button below, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions moving forward with VSDC, I'd be happy to try to answer them in the comment section or possibly answer them in a future video. I'd also like to thank VSDC for sponsoring this entire series so that I can bring you new ideas for creating awesome GoPro videos and family movies. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.